Hello, I'm going to tell you about our 2016 Model X. Uh, a few weeks ago, someone posted a similar video about their Model S and all the problems they've had. Uh, it's pretty much an anecdotal experience. People have been bothering me to do the same thing for ours. I uh, don't really like to because I don't enjoy being on video. Kind of got a face for radio and uh, voice for print, so you guys will have to bear with me. Uh, one thing I will say before we get started, if you want a Tesla, go get one now. This one is literally just an anecdote. Uh, it is probably the worst one, and anything you're going to get is going to be amazing comparatively. And uh, obviously we still have it and still love it. Uh, so you can see here, that uh, stack of papers on the dash or on the center console. That is all the printed out service reports from since we got it. Uh, so I think I'll just set you guys on the dash here and read them to you and then I can get out if there's something interesting to show you in just a minute. Okay, I've got the camera sitting on the dash so you don't have to look at something boring. Uh, although all the brown stuff may be boring. Okay, so for the very first time that it went to service, it's only uh, a little bit after we got it. Uh, we got it and then immediately took it on a trip and had a handful of problems there, so we waited till we got back. Uh, so the first thing was uh, we kept getting a low battery message or the key just simply wouldn't work. Uh, we only got one key at delivery, had to wait for a second one, so... Uh, if I remember right, we didn't even have the app enabled yet, so we had to go and find uh, some batteries, which are kind of hard to find for that for the Model X key fob. Uh, and it kept going through them pretty quick. Uh, so they looks like they updated the firmware on the key fobs, and since then we really haven't had that much of a problem with them sucking down battery. Um, second thing, oh yeah, the vehicle is missing one key fob so they give us another one. Third thing, the uh, seat belt height adjuster does not work on the passenger side. Uh, looks like they only had to take it apart and put it back together properly but it was uh, not assembled fact correct from the factory. Um, driver's side, for the fourth thing, uh, driver's side heat seat cooler is inoperative. Uh, yeah, that that happened a handful of times while we first had it. They weren't able to figure it out um, or even duplicate that it happened. But uh, a few firmware updates later, that's luckily been fixed. Uh, let's see. Driver's side Falcon Wing door fails to close all the way. Uh, attempt to close it multiple times. Yep, uh, had, had some problems with that. Uh, they, this particular time, they found, uh, it looks like some wiring that they had to, uh, reinstall correctly. And it started working better then. Um, the middle row cup holder is stuck. Uh, this is for the backseat people, but it's in the, uh, center console, and it was just stuck in, uh, probably from the factory. And they had to pull it apart and put it back together correctly. Um, next one. The driver's side mirror does not auto-dim, but the other mirror does. Uh, this is another thing they weren't able to duplicate, but would happen a handful of times to us. Uh, that They must fix that with a firmware at some point, because it, we haven't had a problem with that for a long time. Uh, let's see, the next one. The steering wheel is off to the right. And the car also pulls to the right. Uh, they basically aligned it. Um, I don't remember hitting anything. They didn't find any damage. Uh, but they still just did the alignment and everything's been good for that. Uh, the iPhone dock sometimes says unsupported device on the iPhone. Uh, if you power cycle the vehicle, it will work again. They weren't able to... Uh, duplicate that there even though they tested with a bunch of iPhones. Uh, I eventually just bought a new iPhone kit for the center console and 
it's been fine since then, so it was probably just a bad wire. Um, number 10 for this particular one. There's a vibration in the steering wheel at 45 to 50. Uh, they found that the front tires need to be rebalanced, so they did that while they were aligning it. Uh, the passenger side middle row seat reports that it's unlatched. Um, we've moved the seat forward and reverse, and it still reports unlatched. Uh, so this is one of the early seven-seaters, so it has three captain's chairs. And there was, I think this is another one that has been fixed in software because they were unable to duplicate it at the service center. Um, but it would do that if, if you moved it forward and back every once in a while. It would just constantly say on the display that the, the seat's unlatched. Uh, like I say, another one that's been fixed by firmware. Uh, let's see. The driver's side falcon wing door makes a clunk when opening. Um, they found some trim that needed to be re-secured because it wasn't put it on correctly from the factory. Uh, so that was fixed. Um, the driver's side door is contacting the falcon wing and tore a piece of weather stripping. I'll show you this one. Uh, there's a multiple early Teslas that do this, or early X's. Uh, you can kind of see, here's the falcon wing. You can kind of see just a little bit of paint rubbed off right here. And then on the driver's side door, just a little bit right here. And they moved it so that it's now just that far apart. Every once in a while, that would make it with the door kind of bounce open, which is a little bit troubling. Uh, let's see, number 14 for this one. The falcon wing door contacted the front door and knocked off the lower trim piece. I'll get out and show you this one too, because that was kind of funny. Um, every time that the falcon wing door would open on the passenger side, and they've since aligned it, but this gap was way too tight, and it would just rip this right off. And it was, of course, uh, every time someone wanted to look at the car for the first time or, you know, some other embarrassing time. It's typically when most of the problems happen. But they realigned the falcon wing door and that one's been fixed. Uh, number 15 for the first trip. Uh, driver's side falcon wing door appears to have a crack in it. It appears water th can enter through the crack or seam. Uh, let's, man, I should have just stayed outside. Sorry to keep moving you. So on both sides of the doors, it's now all been patched up. But both doors right here where these two pieces of metal come through, come together. This was cracked and you could tell that water was just seeping up towards this seam or towards the seal. Or maybe down from the seal as it came down. But they, they had the body shop fix it up you probably can't even see other than this glimmer of light but there's a noticeable dip there where the two pieces of metal make up uh, let's see number 16 when closing the lift gate there is a grinding noise and it appears to be leaking lubricant from the driver's side lift cylinder uh, they adjusted it so that it would open. It was a little bit off to the right, I think, the whole assembly. And uh, cleaned it up. And so far, we haven't had any other problems with, uh, with the cylinders there. Uh, and yes, number 17 on this one. The lift gate alignment is not even side to side. It's poor on the passenger side. So this is the trunk uh, in the back. And it was it was very very close. Like a lot of these these panel gaps were pretty close to hitting the outer body. So they moved that around and fixed it up. Uh, Eighteen. Customer states front trunk is closed, but vehicle is displaying alert that it is not. 
and the right side hinge was loose. Yeah, let's go take a look at this one. Uh, I've seen this on a couple X's. They're all early. Uh, so if you're looking at a used one, you may want to check this out to make sure there's not going to bite you. So from the factory, this hinge down there, those bolts would come loose. And then the whole assembly wouldn't be able to, to shut because all the torque went to moving the hinge around rather than activating the hinge. And then this is the latch here, this and this. And it would close, but not enough to activate the electronic part. And then you'd get a display warning that it was open and you shouldn't drive. And back then, you actually couldn't drive. It wouldn't even go into reverse or drive if the front trunk was open. Now you can, it just throws up warnings all the time. Um, that looks to actually be it for the first one. So let's move on to number two. Uh, water leak at the right front corner of the driver's side falcon wing door. No state in an automatic car wash and using a hose to wash a vehicle. So they are unable to find this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure we know what it is later. Uh, so we'll get to that at some point. Um, so they weren't able to do anything there. <coughs> um, and then the, the big one that lots of people know about uh, in cloudy weather or other times the headlights are on, you know, dusk, uh, basically a day unlike today. Uh, there's lots of ghosting, like double or triple images of headlights or taillights, especially LED, like brake lights. You'd see three or four images of them. It's very distracting. Um, they were, didn't have a fix at the time. This was in uh, August of 2016, and uh, we actually just got that fixed, which is fantastic. Uh, makes a huge difference to driving the car. And hopefully it will help a lot of other people out, because I know a lot of people have this problem with the earlier cars. Um, let's see, number three. Steering wheel is not centered. It's off to the left now. Ah, uh, they went and changed alignment, or, or however you center the steering wheel on the vehicle again. It was originally off to the right, and they moved off to the left after they changed it. Uh, let's see, number four on this, this second trip here. The passenger seat sometimes refuses to go backwards when it works. It's very noisy compared to forwards, up and down. Uh, it was very noisy, they found, and there's a trim piece that was keeping the motor from moving. So they put that back together, and now it works, and honestly, we haven't had a problem with that since then. Uh, the magnets on the sun visors rattle if they're in the stowed position. Reclipping them helps for a few miles, but does return. They found this uh, as well. Lots of early X's have it. It's this little magnet right here. You can watch it pop in. That would get very, very buzzy and annoying, especially if you're like me and don't really listen to the radio a whole lot. Um, lots, like I say, lots of early X's have that, but they've replaced these and we haven't had a problem with that since then. They had to replace the whole visor, which was, it actually helped with another problem that I think we'll get to in a couple seconds. Let's see, number six for trip number two. The storage compartment under the display keeps falling off. It is this little thing that I have my sunglasses under. Uh, I did not know it at the time, but they popped that off to be able to plug in and access the computer with their service terminals. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, so a clip just fell off and they were able to fix that. Uh, number seven, when both cars are in the garage, there's a clicking every minute from the left side of the vehicle, even if, even if you do not have the key nearby. They were unable to duplicate this. Uh, it still does it. If I leave it in, in the garage, I don't know. Uh, it's really the contactor sitting at the battery. I don't know if the the 12 volt just for whatever reason needs to be recharged constantly while it's sitting in our garage or what. Uh, so far it hasn't been a problem. 
other than just making a click every couple minutes or so. Uh, it doesn't do it while it's charging, obviously, because the, well, I don't know. I don't know why it wouldn't do it while it's charging. I'm not sure that the contactors are used, those same contactors are used for charging or not. Uh, anyway, still not, not a problem other than making a noise. Uh, let's see. Number eight for the second trip. Sometimes air suspension is temporarily unavailable as displayed, especially when the car is waking up. Uh, they were unable to duplicate that. This is another thing that would happen, you know, once a week or so. And firmware revisions have fixed that. Uh, I haven't seen that problem in quite a while. Uh, this was in August of last year, so that's probably been a year since I've seen that. Uh, number nine. Customer states multiple times that the charge port will be red after plugging into the HPWC. If I unplug and reset the HPWC, it'll work. Uh, they tried a bunch of them, and it uh, never failed for them. Um, it would is another one of those once a week or so. It would happen uh, since however many firmwares firmware updates, it's been fine. Um, I'd say it was probably very early of 2017 when we stopped having charging problems off and on, both at the superchargers and at, uh, at home. Let's see, there is a noticeable whistle on the driver's side door, especially in town, and especially when the window's down. Uh, let's see, it was 35 to 40 miles an hour, they found that. And they added some silicone to the inside of the mirror trim panels, which I assume is the painted part of the mirror. If you look, there's a nice little red casing on there and chrome on the bottom. Um, and that completely fixed that issue. Uh, number 11. The driver's side falcon wing door refuses to open completely, even when it's outside. Usually happens with rear passengers and only opens a foot or two, then it beeps. Um, had to hold the uh, interior button until it opened all the way. Um, this time they said that there's improvements coming over uh, firmware update. Um, we've had a few more things fixed with the Falcon Wing doors and there's been improvements in the firmware. And honestly, the last, it's probably been the last year uh, the Falcon Wing doors really haven't been an issue, which is, you know, that was probably the number one issue when, when this car first came out. Uh, but they have fixed that up fantastically. Number 12. Uh, ripped upper seal of the driver's side Falcon Wing door. Uh, happened in the same place. Uh, let's go look at that. Uh, I've seen a couple that have ripped in the same spot, so you may want to check this if you're looking in to use one, because it will let in water. Um, let's see. So right, here we go, right here, this seal would get torn just about there, and you can see where they've kind of fixed this one up so it fits flat. What happens when it tears It'll meet up, it'll f kind of fold up and meet up with this, and then the water just dams against this and runs into here and has a chance to bypass this seal rather than going down this channel like it's designed to. There's a clunking and creaking on the driver's side Funkin' Wing door. Uh, they duplicated that and looks like uh, lubricated one side of a panel. Um, I think that's actually a felt one. Sorry to make you get in and out of the car, but it's still pretty chilly here. Uh, so these, there's this part right here. Probably can't see that too well. There we go. So this would kind of make a clunk right here, and then right here it would kind of squeak. 
I think they've improved these panels on the newer models anyway. Uh, but they, they lubricated something in there to get rid of those noises. Sorry, they've just got some of the things like how much tire depth I've got and the tire pressures and things that you guys don't care about. Uh, so the next one on this Seca trip, we got a contact Tesla alert. I was it unable to get in the car or driving into reverse? Uh, vehicle set for a few hours would go into gear. This one was was kind of a it was rather angry. We uh, went to a baseball game, and immediately when we parked, it started getting angry and uh, called and tried to get it towed and all sorts of stuff, and then just abandoned it and came back later, and then it was fine for a little bit, but it still would pop up the air a little bit uh, driving back home. Um, I think they did something with the firmware, maybe reflashed it. It doesn't say here, but uh, something made that go away. It, but uh, I'm not sure if we've ever got to the bottom of that one. Um, the next one just kind of printed out weird, but uh, the next one there's a shutter when you accelerate. If the suspension is in uh, standard, you can see there's a handful of different things. You've got very low, low, standard, high, and very high. If you're in standard to very high, the car shudders when you accelerate. And this doesn't happen on a new car, but within a few thousand miles it'll start going. Uh, so they replaced the half shafts and jack shaft, and it went away for a few, few thousand miles and has come back. Uh, we've done that a couple times, and... I don't think there's a fix for it because we're we've all pretty much decided to stop replacing half shafts for no reason. Um, another Falcon Wing problem. It wouldn't close all the way except for multiple tries. They pulled the door panels off and found the harness wasn't secured and sending false obstacle signals. So they resecured the harness. I assume that's you know zip ties or. Uh, some sort of attachment to the to the door skin itself um, That had You know yet another falcon wing door problem that they were able to get closer and closer to being perfect um, The driver's door inner seal has a poor fitment at the rear of the door uh, Yeah, so there's a the inner seal there that keeps water out uh was just kind of not manufactured well, or maybe set in the sun or, or something. I don't know. Uh, the new one fits well. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is where that original water leak came from the first time. Um, haven't had water intrusion since then, if I remember right. Um, let's see, second row, driver's side, seat belt is twisted. Uh, yeah, since they had to. I think they had the seat out for some reason, maybe to look at some of the, the sensors when it said it was unlocked, and the seat belt just had a, a uncomfortable twist in it, so they pulled the seat, seat belt apart and fixed that. Um, so that was number 19 for the second trip, and that was it. So let's move on to number three. Uh, the front row seats fail to adjust to presets when second row seats are moved forward. Passenger front seat refused to move backwards at a certain time. Bring the seat all the way forward, enable the seat to move back. So yeah, when you move the middle row seats, the front seats move forward to get out of the way. And at the time, it must have been a firmware problem. Uh, because the seats wouldn't always go all the way back, so... If you were tall enough, you know, it was very hard to get in the car to readjust the seat. 
um, that they were unable to duplicate it at the service center um, and firmware's fixed that since then so we don't worry about it um, the left front door will not open um, and they identified it as uh, the driver latch assembly oh yeah I remember this so they had just brought it home from the second visit and I pulled it in the garage and parked it and came back out I don't know it felt like an hour later maybe and I could not get in the car pushing any of the buttons nothing was happening quite frustrating uh, so we'll, they replaced the latch and um, I think that's all they had to do that time to get that working uh, the front door again made contact with the falcon wing door and caused a chip in the paint uh, they realigned the door painted had the body shop paint the the area where it chipped it. Uh, steering wheel is off to the left again, so they adjusted it back to the right. Uh, if I remember right, this was the one time that the car, after some sort of suspension adjustment, drove with the steering wheel perfectly straight. It's currently still off to the left by five or ten degrees, but I've kind of given up waiting on or trying to get that fixed. Uh, number five for the third trip. Uh, the rear hatch had a loud pop, and a bunch of the trim came loose. Uh, yep, <laughs> hit the little button outside, and terrible noise, and a bunch of stuff fell down. I tried to snap it back on, and then I shut the the hatch and just let them fix it. Uh, so they were able to pull it all apart and put it back together. They think it wasn't together correct from the factory, if I remember right. Uh, but it hasn't happened since and again, this is very early. This is probably August if I go back a couple pages here Oh no, this is the first of September. So yeah so We got it in uh, the first of July. So this is only a couple months in uh, There's a dent in the driver's front door panel near the handle um, It's gone now. So I think trying to get some of this trim back together, I think someone had hit it with a fingernail or a tool or something. Uh, we didn't actually replace it, but uh, it's actually expanded out. You can't even see where it's at now. Uh, having trouble getting the second row seats back to normal position. Uh, yeah, so there's another firmware operation where if you move the seats forward and backwards and forward and backward because you kept forgetting stuff in the back seat and the you know third row seats for some reason uh, the seats wouldn't go all the way back anymore uh, firmware's fixed this um, they didn't do, actually do anything there uh, customer states while driving the dash said falcon wing door open do not drive they didn't do anything about it uh, that time because the firmware update fixed customers' concern before service visit, so that must have been another another firmware deal. Um, multiple alerts appeared and was not able to shift the car in a drive. They reviewed diagnostic information, found no concerns. So this is another time where the car just kind of freaked out, and uh, you know firmware has fixed that since then. It's kind of hard sometimes when when the car would break and even if I had the exact date and time uh, they weren't able to find much wrong with it so I think they've actually increased the logging quite a bit since then because nowadays they're able to find everything pretty quick if I give them a timestamp they're able to tell me at least that they saw something uh, let's see number 12 for is this the third trip? Uh, second row seats rock or move when moving around in the seat. Um, they found this to be normal with other Model X vehicles. Uh, it happens on all these original seven seaters and the six seaters, I believe, because they have the captain's chairs. 
the modern uh, seven seater with the bench seat and the five seater with the bench seat don't have it but the back basically the backrest has a lot of play in it compared to compared to most cars but they say it's normal more mostly concerned about it because of you know the thought of an accident if a seat comes apart because of that but if that's how it's designed that's fine uh, number 13 here on the third visit the hinge on the front is loose and hood is now misaligned now this was the time where that that hinge I showed you on the front um, I think originally the the front was just misaligned uh, by the panel and then this time is when that hinge came all the way loose and I couldn't actually shut it so they fixed that up um, the front door latch is oxidizing they replaced that uh, basically that's just the the part on the door frame that the latch hits so I guess that would be the striker um, lift gate makes a grinding noise when opening um, this time they're unable to duplicate it I think that one I can't remember it doesn't make the noise anymore at any rate um, front latch is noisy when opening uh, I think this was a firmware thing uh, when you hit the front button you can hear the solenoid hit and open up a open the, the primary latch there and when you would hit it there one of the firmwares it would try to open it like five or six times and just keep making noise uh, so firmwares oh, fix that one trip number four Oh, this wasn't even a trip. I'll show it to you, though. Uh, if you tow with these, and I'll probably make a video on this later, I've upgraded mine to this draw tight hitch. But there's this panel that you would take out on the original hitch, the one that comes with the car, so that you can access it. This one only has one bolt that holds it in. They modified it pretty quickly to hold, or to have two bolts to hold it in. And I think mine actually just flew off driving down the highway because this is before I ever even tried to tow with it. Um, at any rate, I just bought another one. Uh, looks like it was a whole 2737 to buy one of those. Say we'll get into towing stuff and hitches a little later, or maybe in a different video. Trip number five. And this would have been October, middle of October of 2016. <coughs> Excuse me. Inspect front half shafts. Um, I'm not sure why. It doesn't have a customer states thing here. But they inspected them and found them correctly in installed. Maybe there was a a ward, a uh, you know service bulletin or something for them. <coughs> uh, let's see, the driver's front door, when closed, is still open a quarter inch or so. Got to open and close it. Uh, they found the driver's door latch failing again, so they replaced the front and uh, left and right door latches. Oh yeah, so this one, this one is actually kind of, kind of more interesting than that. Um, was that a supercharger? And this happened, and the door would just keep bouncing open the quarter of an inch. And uh, called them, and I couldn't. We tried to work with, you know, a pin to try to get the latch to close and all sorts of stuff. And they actually had to come and flatbed it from a supercharger because. This was still when the car wouldn't actually let you go into gear when the doors or the trunk or anything were open. Uh, so that was, that's not a whole lot of fun to just have a door latch keep you from, you know, even limping at home or something. Um, I think that that was a pretty common thing because they have modified the, the door, the front door latches a few times and... You know, if you're buying a used one, you might want to check into the to see if that has been replaced. But my guess is they would have all failed by now. 
and been replaced. So I think it was a corrosion problem of some nature. Uh, let's see, number three for this. Window does not auto roll down when opening. And when closing, the window catches on the trim, allowing water to enter the vehicle. Uh, I think you can actually look at other videos of mine and, and a handful of other people. The window would kind of open and uh, or close around the bright work, the, the chrome strip above the window, and water and noise and all sorts of awful stuff. So this was actually related to the failed latch this time because it uses the latch to figure out when to roll it up and roll it down. You can see when you, when you open the door, the window closes, or yeah, it closes a little bit. There you can see the window moving. I don't know, it might be actually too clean. There you can see it shoot down the little Tesla logo. Should I be At any rate, if that latch in there doesn't work, you can't figure out when to activate the window, and that was a problem there. Uh, both front door speaker grills rattle. Uh, retention clips they need to replace on here. That was pretty common on these early ones, too. They came out with a different little speaker design or clip design or something. It's not a problem anymore. Uh, the powered front door sometimes will not open. It has to press the exterior button for 30 seconds. Uh, again, on the, the latches for what was causing that. Um, an alert appeared saying to contact Tesla service. It's a common theme. you probably hear more of those in a little bit. Uh, if you shut the door, the message will go away. They found faults with the front forward facing camera so they replaced that calibrated it um, that camera probably hasn't been a problem again we will see more of the contact Tesla service though um, second row seat states it's unlatched when it appears to be latched this time they duplicated it and changed Let's see, removed the backing and inspected for proper operation of the pitch actuator and the cable routing. There's no noticeable difference in the click, and they recommend replacing the second row seat. So they had to order them, and they could get, uh, get the part later. Uh, so we'll see that at some other time. Um, number eight, I complained about the ghosting again, because that, uh, that at night, honestly, to me, was nauseating. You know, seeing four or five of the same image just gets really hard to see, and I don't, I don't wear glasses or contacts, and I can't imagine people with them, you know, adding even more to their vision. I do have been irritating. Uh, that looks to be it for what was the fifth, I think, visit. So let's move on to number six. It was late October of 2016. Passenger front turn signal is inoperative. All others are working. This was great. Uh, I actually got pulled over for not using a turn signal. And that's, uh, well, hopefully it's not like me. I try to use my turn signals. But uh, while sitting there being pulled over, we looked at them. And sure enough, the front was working. And the back is not. Uh, this turned out to be a firmware thing because only a couple days later, the right one went out, and guess who got pulled over a second time? I believe by the same officer, probably tell, wanting to tell me that it was broken again. Uh, so they showed up at my house and replaced those. Uh, they have worked fine since then. Um, like I said, I think it was a firmware issue, but it was firmware on the light itself. And that's actually, here I'll get out and show you the fog lights and the turn signals are all one piece right here and that whole thing has firmware in it for whatever reason and from what I understand they weren't able to update it so they just had to replace the whole unit on both sides um, at, on the same trip the passenger side falcon wing door does not open all the way even when no objects are present 
uh, continuing trend there. Uh, they inspected the ultrasonic sensor and the sensor failed the test so they ordered the parts and they'll install it at a later date. Number seven. This one feels thick. Hopefully it's not that bad. Let's see. Steering wheel is making a squeaking noise when turning in either direction. Uh, that was actually, I actually fixed that one myself before they got their hands on it. But uh, this little I don't even know what you call it, a leather gasket, rubber gasket maybe. Anyway, it wasn't clicked into place fully. And when you turn the wheel, it just would go squeak, squeak, squeak. Drive you nuts. Working around in parking lots. Um, I haven't seen any other X's do that. So, you know, I think that was just a, they probably had it apart and it just didn't get snapped in all the way or something. Uh, let's see, right side Falcon Wing door does not open all the way, install a special rear sensor. So they already, this is when they had got a hold of the sensors and put them in. Uh, that's another one, so they replaced it on both sides. And then they replaced the wiper blades and uh, changed out some fluids. It cost me a whole $55. Uh, I think that was my 12,000 mile service. Uh, Something like that. It was a little past that, 14,000, so yeah, had the 12,000 mile service done. And uh, they actually didn't have a, a part or a uh, service way to invoice me then, so they just charged me for the parts. So it was the, the fluid and the, uh, the wiper blades. So I kind of lucked out there on a few hundred dollars worth of service that they did. four-wheel alignment based on mileage, $77 for that one. Um, it is nice to have these aligned every so often. We go through enough miles on the highway that you probably don't need it every, you know, 12,000 miles, but uh, I tend to do it every every time I change the tires, so on this one it's about every 30,000 it seems like. Um, they also replaced the second row passenger seat. They also replaced both sun visors. Um, it says due to splitting and the rattling. So the other thing that happens on these early ones is if you can, oh, there's my finger. Right along here, it would split along this whole axis, axis, and just look ugly. And then we talked about the, the rattle from this guy up here a little bit ago. So this was, what did I say, September uh, or October of 2016, and haven't had a problem with the sun visor since then, so they've they've done a good job of coming out with new parts for that. Um, and then it looks like the rest of this was just how much tire depth I have and other stuff. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. Number eight. Number eight. This was middle of January of 2017. Uh, car needs service message again. Disappears after a few minutes. Four times in total. And we've got some dates on here and stuff. Uh, no alerts present. Verified proper operation. Found one stored alert for a missing thermal controller. They pulled the fuse and reset. Uh, so that probably fixed it for that time. Um, number two. Noticeable shaking, shuddering. So this was the second time that they replaced the uh, jack shafts, whatever. Or at least when I complained about it for the second time. Uh, no, yeah, they they recommended it, but they didn't have the parts still. So obviously went back for that one again. Whew, what are we on here? 45 minutes of just me talking. That's awful. Uh see both front seats start rocking slightly forward and back especially while stopping uh, this started happening for the front seats kind of like the back ones uh, but they said this wasn't normal and that obviously concerned me again for in case of an accident type of thing so they ordered new new seats after verifying all the bolts were torqued 
uh, so I had to get it at some point. Uh, let's see, the right rear seat clicks and snaps as it unfolds. Sometimes it won't lay flat, it must be raised and lowers. I'll show you this because I've seen this on a handful of, of older Teslas, so if you're buying a used one, you may want to see it. Just check it out because I believe the parts are expensive if you had to do it out of warranty. So right here, these are the back seats. There's a hinge in there. I think you can get two. Just by moving this out of the way. There you go. So right there, this hinge gets all broken somehow or is poorly installed at the factory or, or something. You can see it's it's kind of hard to get it right anyway because this one has been replaced well, but it still sits a little bit closer to the right than the left. But when it's broken, you can't even raise the seat up without feeling like you're going to break the whole thing or it won't go down all the way. So they replaced that. I believe, if I remember right, it had a funny name. I believe it was called the Seat Kelp, as, as in the, the thing you find in the ocean. Uh, let's see, number five of trip number eight. Driver's window not rolling up, final quarter when it's shut. So this goes all the way back to the, the door latches. And this time it was a calibration. So they performed the calibration and everything was good then. Uh, left rear ta tail light not illuminating fully. Uh, yeah, sometimes that happened. That was a, a firmware issue or maybe something else needed to be reset. They were unable to duplicate it. Uh, but it happened a few times, but it hasn't happened in quite a while. Uh, so right now I'm considering that one fixed. Uh, let's see, number seven. When supercharging alert will intermittently appear, saying supercharging did not start, try unplugging and replugging the connector. Uh, that happened one day at every supercharger we tried going to. Uh, it was a pretty long trip, so we probably hit five or six that day, something like that. They were unable to duplicate it. Found no signs of damage or wear. I kind of wonder if there was a problem that entire day with just with superchargers in general. I'm not sure. Um, we haven't had a charging problem. This may have actually been the last charging problem we had. We'll find out when we go through the rest of them because I don't remember all the dates off the top of my head. Um, but it's, it's typically not a problem now. Um, at a specific location, the trunk will only open about one foot vehicles outside of no obstructions. Uh, they couldn't duplicate the concern because that specific location is about a, I don't know, 1200 miles from the, from the service center. It still does it. It's some bizarro thing. So I just deal with it. I don't know what I did that is, you know, GPS tracked or what. Or maybe it's seen, you know, a tree beside it that, in that specific parking spot. I don't know. One of those things that you just live with. Let's see, number nine. Falcon wing doors only open about a foot. Uh, yeah, so they, this was a different Falcon wing door, so they opened it and found the harness damaged. So they replaced the har harness. Well, I guess they didn't replace it, they just ordered the uh, parts. Uh, right falcon wing door opens spontaneously. Fobs are out of range. Vehicles in sleep mode. No HVAC. Yeah, uh, I think a number of people have reported this. And I haven't seen it in a long time, and I haven't heard about it in a long time, so hopefully it's a firmware thing. But we are somewhere, you know, maybe two, three hundred yards from the thing. And somehow we were watching it at the time, and the door just opened all by itself, even though the keys were, were with us. Uh, and it happened a couple other times where he just came back and the, 
you know, come back from shopping or whatever, and the Falcon Wing door was just hidden open and the radio playing and the air conditioner on or whatever. Um, but that, that hasn't happened in a long time. So I think that was a firmer thing that they just didn't tell service about or, or something. Uh, below 35 degrees, front camera is excessively fogging and disabling auto steer. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that was because the camera was replaced or not. Um, in the right conditions, it will still do that. If the, you know, even if the rest of the windshield is clear, since, I don't know, it still fogs up inside the little hole that the camera's in. Um, it doesn't happen that often, but it's, it's kind of irritating when it does. Uh, usually if you turn the heater off or on full blast, it'll clear up after a few minutes. Um, let's see, driver's side mirror not pulling in when locking vehicle. Uh, it's a known concern, updated the firmware and everything was working then. So something killed the, some firmware update killed the mirror. They were able to fix that without replacing anything. Passenger side falcon door is unresponsive. It doesn't beep. Um, they suspect the latches were frozen because of temperature. Um, they found the speaker harness not plugged in, plugged in the harness, and found the door operating normally. Uh, well, it's about to get cold and snowy here within the next month, so I guess we'll find out about that again. Um, let's see, falcon wing door partially opens a few feet, then beeps. Uh, they open. They ordered a new harness, and we'll wait for the parts to arrive. So I don't know. We're probably on like number five or six of falcon wing door problems. So that was it for number eight. Uh, trip number nine. Internet radio and album artwork is not working, even for music played through Bluetooth. Uh, found they found it operating normal. Um, I think that probably just rebooted the the thing and or rebooted the computer, which you can do with holding down the two scroll wheels on the steering wheel. Uh, that does happen from time to time. I don't know what the deal is. They probably don't or haven't spent any time looking into it because you can just get it back by rebooting. Um, let's see. So this is in March of this year and uh, this is when the second key problem started showing up. Uh, the key is not detected in the car and I've got to start the vehicle with the mobile app part of the time. They found the alert or they found the alert and they replaced both the keys and everything was good for a while. Uh, the seats, the front seats finally came in, so they replaced that. Um, it. And then the uh, half shafts and jack shaft showed up for, I believe this was the second time they replaced those. And again, it was fine for a couple thousand miles after having those replaced. And now it's vibrating again. Uh, they also replaced the parts for the back seat kelp that I just told you about. And then uh, the cup holder for the third row seat, or second row seat, was, uh, was bad again. So they tore that apart and put it back together and everything's good again. So that must just happen. My guess is they've probably redesigned it because I've only seen two that do this. But you can see that pops out and it'll get stuck in there. No amount of prying or anything will, will get it out of there. Oh man, another falcon wing door. Uh, both falcon wing doors do not operate as expected. I found them. Um, Failing to open and close is designed, so they replaced the harnesses. This may have just been that the harnesses came in, so they, they changed those out. Um, the bump stop has rubbed off paint. You'll see this on every Model X to this day. 
show you. It's not a functional issue at all. But right here, you can see it's rubbed off a little bit. I'm not sure why they don't just put, you know, a circle of plastic sticker and a little clear one right there just to prevent that from wearing out. But it's aluminum. It's not going to rust. It's only a cosmetic issue, but you will see that on all of them even to this day. Number 10. I think we're past halfway here, so hopefully this will go faster. So we're minute 54 here. Woo. Uh, so after they replaced that uh, those half shafts last time, uh, we were unfortunately at a funeral and the car started leaking red stuff all over. Uh, so it turned out to be the axle seal on the half shaft in the front. I'm not sure if it was damaged when they're installing the half shafts or if it, you know, just wore out or who knows. At any rate, uh, you know, like usual, this car finds the most irritating times to, to break down and they had to tow it to keep from damaging it. Um, and it looks like that was actually the only thing they fixed for that trip. So, service center trip number 11. Car needs service alert present. Uh, let's see, this is in April of 2017. Uh, they found the alert immediately present. Found the air suspension module failed internally. So they replaced the air suspension module. Um, I actually got the sunshade then too. So on this glass, there's this awesome thing. It's kind of, I'm sure everyone knows about it, but uh, you can see the whole, whole huge piece of glass. If you're, you know, say in Florida or Arizona or wherever, it gets really warm coming through there. So they've made a, a sunshade that's supposed to come with all of them, but the early ones didn't ship with them. And it took many, many months. Let's see, it took from July of 2016 to April of 2017 for that to come in for our car. Uh, and that is much appreciated, especially when we're in Florida or, you know, even here in Illinois, it gets very warm in the summer some days. Uh, let's see. During inspection, the technician noticed that the driver's door glass is catching on the trim. Uh, so they replaced the window regulator and outer belt seal. Uh, so again, like I say, there's other videos of this, but the window would just open just a little bit. Uh, I'll get out and show you. So if, that, if the window doesn't roll upright, it just catches in this, on this trim and goes outside, kind of like this, rather than inside and tucking up in that seal. And then hide it places like right here and right back here there'll be such a huge gap it'll be like a quarter inch or more and that is plenty to make a lot of a lot of noise and obviously let in water if it's ran so they replaced the re window regulators it looks like both of them And the outer belt seals, whatever those are. And the door drive unit, whatever that is. And the pillars and sill trim. Adjusted fit of the air A pillar. So the A pillar is this first pillar. So they must have adjusted some trim right up here. Or maybe a seal. Um, that is one of the one of the things that the new cars do a lot better is these these front windows without having a frame just don't fit well on these early X's. The new ones are much 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 better. Um, let's see, visit number twelve. Actually, I believe they came out and fixed this one. Black residue appearing on the driver's front window glass. You can kind of, nope, the window's too clean now. But right up here in the middle, a whole mess of black stuff was, was showing up. And turned out that it, uh, 
a piece of foam or butyl butylene patch fell off and was just streaking there so they had to pull the whole door panel off which is a pain otherwise I probably would have done that myself uh, so they came out and did that uh, just wanted to make sure you know having them come out too that it wasn't something that's gonna get worse especially since it just had a whole bunch of window work done at that time Let's see number 13 parking brake calipers there was a recall for them so they did that per the bulletin uh, again, the vibration of the CV shafts under acceleration uh, it was previously diagnosed and corrected, but returned. <coughs> uh, basically, engineering is working on a correction, and they're not going to do anything about it at that time. Um, loud clunk from left front wheel area, all dashboard and morning lights illuminated went away. Uh, I think the ABS might have gotten confused at that point. Could have maybe hit a rock or something. <coughs> but I had to pull over. It, it shook pretty hard there for for a few hundred feet. And I had turned the car off and then turned it back on. And it was drivable after that. Uh, so there's nothing for them to fix other than, you know, look at the timestamps and grab the logs and send it to engineering in case they get more of those type of things. Uh, the passenger side rear wheel arch trim is damaged. I'll show you that. Uh, it cost $58.50 in case you do that. So that's this piece right here. It looks like it would be easy to, to put on, but it's really not the easiest part. On ours, it's actually this one, the, the right rear. You can see we had a little bit of a whoops um, yeah that's only 60 bucks which when you look at the part makes a little more sense because I know that's just a little piece of plastic but it holds in a couple of things and it's not too awful of a price given what cars cost trip number 14 there's a water leak and wind noise from the passenger front door window. Uh, front window glass is not making full contact with the door seal. Adjusted it. Uh, everything was good. Um, probably came from when they replaced all the, the window gubbins inside there. Um, since they've done this, this was a... <coughs> I think this was actually the first time that the mobile ranger came out rather than just someone driving since we're we're a couple hours from the nearest service center here uh, so they now have a mobile ranger here in our town which is nice um, it looks to be all they did that time which is probably because it was leaking water kind of kind of bad to be driving a car and have water drip in your face when it's raining at least a new modern car See, trip number 15. Oh, this was a bad one. So uh, we had that hurricane in Florida and went down and fixed up some of our stuff down there. And if you know Florida, you know you need air conditioning if you want to be sane. And the air conditioner died while I was down there. And uh, it also turned out that the air conditioner is needed for supercharging, which I guess, you know, is much more obvious in retrospect because you gotta take all that heat out of the battery that you're putting in there and uh, they use the air conditioner to do that so the AC compressor louder than expected when charging requires replacement due to internal failure so even worse after I'd gotten back and tried to use the car uh, there was a probably a short inside the, uh, the AC compressor which uh, the car thought meant that the battery the main battery wasn't isolated so it wouldn't even let me drive I think we'll actually get to that here in a here in a minute but basically the car just up and quit in my work parking lot so they had to come and flatbed it for the however many the time uh, where it was just DOA uh, so they replaced the compressor um, 
Rated range, displaying incorrectly, accompanied by an electrical burning smell. Yeah, well, while it died in my office there, it smelled awful, and someone told me that there was smoke coming out of the left front. Uh, I didn't witness that myself, but I have no reason to believe that it wasn't happening. Um, the range, I, I think this was just related to the, the way that the air compressor failed, but the range went from, you know, like 70 or 80%, whatever it takes me to get, get to work in the morning, and it showed it at like 10% or something, which was not even going to get to the nearest supercharger. Um, but they updated the firmware and everything came back, so it's probably just because that, that air conditioner failed. Um, excessive vibration coming from the front of vehicle, vehicle while accelerating. You're probably getting sick of hearing about this one. Uh, they, I'm sure they are, and I am. Uh, duplicated customer concern, inspected and verified. Uh, it's expected when the suspension is set to high or very high. Um, mine does it in low and standard as well. Uh, we're still waiting on engineering to fix this one. Uh, alert appearing regularly that states the key is not inside when fobs are present in the vehicle. Uh, this one was great, so I ended up having to uh, timestamp this every time it would happen. It was once or twice a week or so. The key was kind of interesting because it would let you get inside the car and open doors and the frunk and the trunk and all that good stuff, but it would just say that it couldn't start. We used the, the phones to start it when it would do it, but you know, you don't always have your phone on you or you don't ha always have internet. Or the car doesn't always have internet, so that's not a good thing for, for everyday use. Um, it took a while to track this one down, so I think we'll see that fix here after a while. Uh, but they didn't fix it then. This was in uh, early October of 2017. Um, so they reinitialized the immobilizer and confirmed they are working correctly at that time. Um, let's see... Passenger side falcon door rolling window is noisy during operation. Uh, oh yeah, rolling the... I think that's just worded poorly when it got typed up. But uh, if you roll down the back windows, it would make an awful screeching racket. And they found a window seal and lubricated it or something. Uh, that went away, so whatever they did there fixed it. Um, right front window rolls up over bright work trim at highway speeds. Uh, yeah, they, they keep trying to get this perfect. And, uh, at the moment it's adjusted so that it doesn't make noise while I'm driving normally. But it still kind of opens up over that bright work if I'm driving really fast. But especially if there's a crosswind. If there's a crosswind, the leeward side, which is the side that the wind is not hitting, will almost always open over the bright work. Uh, that doesn't happen on the new models, on the, the AP2 and higher it seems like. So they've made some adjustments and parts there that either don't fit this or, you know, whatever. Um, that's just a continuing issue. If you pull over and stop, if your car does this, uh, you can pull over and stop, roll the window all the way down and all the way back up and it will fix itself. Uh, just don't roll down while it's going fast or blazing into the wind. Um, here's the thing about burning smell coming from left front bumper. They didn't find any smoke. Uh, we kind of figured that it was like the refrigerant coming out since the compressor quit, like a seal blew there or something. But it was still full of refrigerant, so we're still not sure what, what someone saw with the smoke. But... Uh, it hasn't come back, and the car runs great now, so uh, we'll live with it. Uh, grinding noise coming from the front of the vehicle. This was the compressor. Uh, if you had it charging, especially if it's warm outside, you need the air compressor, as I mentioned, for, for it. And while the bearings were going out, or however, whatever that failure mode was, was making an awful racket there before the, the AC up and quit completely. Um, so that was it for number 15. Only two left. 
Number 16. Ah, uh, the key fob thing came back. It was bad. So they tried to replace the body control module. They tried to do it once, and they took it all day, and couldn't do it. So they ordered a third one, and put it in, and this time it worked. Um, right front window has wind noise. Messed around with that thing again. Home link not functioning correctly. Uh, so that was a firmware thing, which if you follow Tesla really closely, like really closely, like us obsessive nerds do, uh, that was the thing for a couple firmware revisions. They they kind of broke Homelink, which is your garage door opener that's built into the car. Uh, so new version fixed that up, um, and that was it for this trip. And yeah, the the big thing there was the replacement of the the body control module, which since then this car has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, this was in middle of October. Um, I didn't even know that it was having problems with some of this other stuff. Like I have the energy savings turned on and sometimes when you get in and push the brake, it says, please wait for the car to start before trying to drive or whatever, whatever that message is. Uh, sometimes I would take three or four minutes and I know, I know that sounds like a short time, but when you're just sitting there, that's a long time. And now it's it's just instant. And we haven't had the problem with the key since then. I I kind of honestly wonder if, if that module has been a problem since the very beginning on the car with all the weird contact Tesla service and all the, you know, like the things they could never duplicate at the service center, like the mirror folding out or whatever that one was and the, you know, the seat latch not being latched or whatever it says for that. Um, it's only been a couple months since then, but but yeah, it is. It's been much, much, much better since they replaced that module, which was unfortunately a pain for them. So uh, I really appreciate that they took the time to do that. Uh, so this one this is the last one, number seventeen. Uh, this was just a couple days ago, the twenty seventh of November, twenty seventeen. Uh, odometer. 42,986 miles so that's a long time to go with a, a windshield that is really hard to see out of when it's dark outside they replaced it with a new part number oh and it's not on here I wish the part number was on here could have told you I'll put it in the description because a lot of people are going to be looking for that one uh, if you have autopilot version 1 uh, this one fixes the ghosting 100% when I picked it up the other day drove it home in the dark and it is absolutely fantastic at least compared to the compared to the old one you know I know it, it sounds crazy to be excited over a windshield but that makes the car feel you know brand new to me um, I can drive at night and when it's snowing and raining and all sorts of stuff out without having to, you know, feel like I'm going to get a headache or just the, the mental irritation of driving with all those reflections. So, uh, basically in summary, there's a hundred thousand problems with the Falcon doors originally. Uh, they've fixed up that with firmware and a bunch of parts. The new ones are, are fantastic. If you get the, I'll, I'll show you these buttons. Uh, I don't have problems with ours anymore. If you see the newer Teslas, instead of this push-pull switch like that, and you can push it to close it, the new ones are just open and close, or maybe open and close, I'm not sure. Uh, if you get one of those, the Falcon Wing doors, I've never seen them have a problem with that particular switch. So somewhere around that time, they've priced, you know, either switched out parts or maybe an installation process uh, obviously ours had some sort of installation problems because the harnesses weren't in there right and the sensors weren't installed right or failed or, or whatever but the falcon wing doors in the last you know six months or a year or whatever it's been just flawless and they were by far the biggest problem starting 
the windshield the windshield was my other big problem uh, they fixed that the shuttering they're working on we may have some news here shortly with those um, and then everything else has been random parts failures from early designs or uh, improper installations it sounds like a Sounds like a big pain in that, you know, you shouldn't buy one of these because they're terrible, but I, I disagree. I think you should go get one of these now. They've they've figured it all out. Absolutely wonderful cars. Uh, called it a quite the paradox because it is both the best car we've ever had by far and the worst one at the same time, just with all the, the issues. But seriously, go buy one because this is the worst one. Uh, if you want free supercharging and all, you can use our uh, referral link that I'll put in the description. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment or I guess leave a comment because I don't know what else you can do with YouTube. Uh, so you're probably thinking, why didn't we just return it? Uh, since it was obviously a lemon. Well, we drive a lot. Uh, in Illinois, where the car is registered, you only get 12,000 miles or a year to do the Lemon Law claims. And I believe, if I have my details right, could be wrong, that you have to take it back for the same problem three times. Which we've done. But, uh, we drive so much that we blew through those miles in, you know, well, uh, it was so close to not even making it to the shop the first time. So... Anyway, have a good day.